Welcome to Smart Catalyst Jan 22, 2019. So today we are going to see all these articles. The first one is Pakistan shares draft pact on Kartarpur corridor. The second one is center proposes to hike monthly pensions. The third one is plastic waste imports to India go up. And the fourth one is India's nine billionaires hold 50% of the nation's wealth by Oxfam report. The fifth one is about the Pravashi Bharatiya Divas. The sixth one is Pratan Mantri Rashtriya Bal Purashkar 2019. And the last one is Drug Regulators Wings clip. So the first article is Pakistan shares draft pact on Kartarpur corridor. So what the news here is Indian and Pakistani officials are expected to meet next month to discuss the draft agreement. So who sent this draft agreement means the Pakistan official actually sent this draft agreement about the Kartarpur corridor in Punjab to the Indian high commissioner in Islamabad. So basically this Kartarpur corridor is a road link which connects two places. One is Darbar Sahib in Kartarpur which is in Pakistan and second one is with Dera Baba Nanak shrine which is in Gurdaspur district in India. So if you see in this picture it actually connects these two places. One is Kartarpur Sahib Darbar Sahib which is in Pakistan with Dera Baba Nanak which is in India. So this is the final resting place of Sikh's faith founder who is Guru Nanak Dev. So what are the main objective of this draft agreement by Pakistan means there are three major purposes. One is facilitation of Indian Sikh Yatris to visit the Gurudwara which is this Darbar Sahib Kartarpur in Pakistan and second one is to facilitate visa free movement for the Indian Sikh pilgrims. They don't need any kind of visa. They just need to obtain a permit to visit that Gurudwara which is in Pakistan. So the Pakistan's new Prime Minister is actually aiming to open this pilgrim corridor which is connecting India and Pakistan during 550th birth anniversary of Baba Guru Nanak in November 2019 and he is the one who is actually the founder of Sikhism. Okay. Why we actually need this kind of draft agreement between these two countries means in order to promote interfaith harmony as well as religious tolerance among the people and Muhammad Ali Jinnah's vision of a peaceful neighborhood which is especially essential at this point of time. So now we are going to see about this Kartarpur Gurudwara. So it located on the banks of river Ravi and it is important for the Sikhs because their first Sikh Guru who is Guru Nanak Dev he spent nearly 18 years over here okay so the second article is center proposes to hike the monthly pensions so what is the news here is the rural development ministry recently proposed the monthly pensions of elderly poor disabled and widows to be increased so what could be the implication if suppose this monthly pensions of these people get increased means the additional annual cost of 18,000 crore would be imparted into the finance ministry's budget. So the total budget would become 30,000 crore. So what is the existing central scheme provision means it covers nearly 3 crore people and it includes all these elderly, disabled and widows and as per the existing scheme 200 rupees for those who are under 80 and 500 rupees for those who are above 80 years but as per the new rural development ministry's proposal it will be increased to 800 and 1200 rupees respectively so it will increase the annual budget to 30,000 crore so these all schemes are coming as a part of NSAP which is the national social assistance program so now we are going to see what this national social assistance program means so the national social assistance program is a centrally sponsored scheme with an annual budget of the mentioned amount so it currently co covers more than three crore people and these are those who are actually getting benefited so the government is actually planning to induct this increase in amount or increase in budget as a part of interim budget okay so we have to know first what this interim budget means. First you have to understand one thing that government needs money for its functioning. So it collects the money from the public by means of taxes. But for expenditure the government actually needs the approval from the legislatures. Right. So the legislature's approval is needed for the government in order to spend the money which is collected by means of taxes. So the government seeks approval of expenditure for the next financial year which usually from April 1 of this year to March 31st of next year. So after this proposal by the government discussion 
voting and passing of appropriation bill goes beyond the current fiscal year. So since parliament is not able to vote the entire budget before the commencement of the new financial year, the necessity to keep enough finance at the disposal of the government is very important. So what does this vote on account means? It is a grant in advance which is given to the government in order to enable the government to carry on the duty until the proper procedures of the parliament like the voting of demands, passing of appropriation bill, passing of financial bill, everything should be carried out by the parliament but it will take more time. So until then a smaller amount of money is given to the government in order to run properly. So that is what this vote on account which is a grant in advance. It, it is usually a grant of one sixth of the estimated expenditure. Okay. So in that budget, one sixth of the money is allocated for the OTON account. But the interim budget is slightly different from the OTON account because an interim budget is a complete set of account and it includes both the expenditure and the receipts where the OTON account is having only the expenditure side. So it is a full budget. The interim budget is a full budget especially made by the government during the last year of its term. So any government during its last year of the term it is actually making this interim budget okay so just before the election so this last year budget as it is it cannot contain big policy proposals and all so you have to know two things here one is can this OTAN account be granted for more than two months means usually it is two months but yes we can extend more than two months when means during the election year or when it is anticipated that the demands of the voting of the demands of grants or pausing of appropriation bill it will take longer time means then we can extend this vote on accounts time so if you see for this financial year also the vote on account is for a period of four months okay from march to june because it is an election year right so similarly whether it is mandatory for government to present the vote on account instead of full budget in an election year that means during the election year whether it is mandatory for the government to present vote on account or interim budget mean no it is not mandatory but technically it is not mandatory for the government but it would be inappropriate to impose the policies that may or may not be acceptable to the incoming government taking over in the same year so in order to smoothen that process only they usually go for or opt for this vote on account or interim budget so who actually authorizes the legislature in kind of this budget things means in the article 226 of the constitution it actually mandates the parliamentary approval is necessary to draw the money from the consolidated fund of india similarly in article 114.3 it stipulates that no amount can be withdrawn from cfi without the appropriation bill enactment so these two only give the power to the legislature before the government withdraw the money from the cfi so the next article is plastic waste imports to india it actually goes up it is said by a report which is a Delhi based environmentalist organizations report. So what the report suggests is the influx of the PET bottle has quadrupled that means it become four times from 2017 to 2018 alone. So if you see the background then the Indian firms are usually importing the plastic scraps from major countries like China, Italy, Japan and Malawi for recycling. And imports of this PET bottle scrap and flax has increased from nearly 12,000 ton to 48,000 ton in just one year and it is an increase of nearly 290 percentage. So also within India we are consuming like 13 million tons of plastics but we are recycling only 4 million tons of plastics. So all these are attributed to the lack of efficient waste segregation system and inadequate collection mechanism. So because of that only there is this much plastics which are still getting to be recycled or not yet recycled so much of the plastics are not making its way into the recycling centers so why this sudden import of plastics into our country means as per the government's banning of 2015 particularly PET bottles the import of the plastic weights into our country is actually prohibited but an amendment in 2016 which actually allows the import of the plastic items into our country only by the agencies situated in the special economic zones so the agencies which are in SEZ zones they can actually import the plastic scraps so this is what the 2016 amendment and it is this loophole that's been continuously exploited and there is a sudden import of this plastics into our country and another major thing is the China which is once a major global importer of the plastic waste for the recycling is now actually had banned such imports so obviously all the countries who are before exporting these plastic items now turn 
and they just started exporting it to our country which is India. So only there is a lot of dumping of the plastic. So if you see in this picture over 50 nations send their plastic waste to India making India the 10th biggest plastic scrap importer and nearly top 10 exporters account for nearly 83% of plastic India imports. So top 10% actually dumping into our country and it accounts for 83%. So the next article is India's 9 billionaires hold 50% of nation's wealth. So it is said by the Oxfam report. So who is this Oxfam means? It is an international NGO working in global poverty elevation. So as per the inequality in India report by the Oxfam, the inequality in India is actually having a female face which means women are suffering more due to the inequality than men and nearly 3.1% of India's GDP is only by the unpaid workers and also nearly 10% of the population holds 77.4% of wealth and 1% of the population is having 51.53% and among them the top 9 billionaires are holding like 50% of the nation's wealth. So this is what reported by the Oxfam report and only 4.8% of nation's wealth is holding by bottom 60 percentage of the people. So if you see in this picture 9 out of 10 billionaires are only men and in India only 4 women billionaires are there and among them 3 are inheriting their family wealth. And the same report suggests that the wealth of the top 9 billionaires is equal to wealth of the bottom 50 percent of the population and they also suggested like between 2018 to 2022 India is expected to produce 70 new dollar millionaires every day and this will have an impact on social and democratic structure of India as a whole. And one major concern in that report is only 0.5% of additional tax from the top 1 billionaires will be utilized by the government for 50% of India's total health budget. So why this means underfunding of public services and undertaxing of corporates are the main reasons which is put forward by the Oxfam report. So underfunding and undertax. So the next article is Pravashi Bharatiya Divas gets underway in Varanasi. So what the news here is the 15th Pravashi Bharatiya Divas is being held on 21st to 23rd January this year in Varanasi Uttar Pradesh. So the day when Gandhi actually returned to India from South Africa is usually celebrated as Pravashi Bharatiya Divas and that day is 21st January and he actually returned on 21st January 1915 from South Africa to India. So this Pravashi Bharatiya Divas is celebrated once in every two years so it is a biennial event. So why they are actually celebrating means in order to strengthen the engagement of the overseas Indian community with our government as well as to reconnect those overseas Indian community with their roots who are in India. So during this Pravashi Bharatiya Divas, selected overseas Indians are also honoured with prestigious Pravashi Bharatiya Samman Award. So this Samman Award is to recognise the overseas Indian community's contribution to various fields both in India as well as their contribution in abroad. So this year's theme is role of Indian diaspora in building new India. So the next article is Pratan Mantri Rashtriya Bal Purashka 2019. So it actually have two subcategories. One is Bal Shakti Purashkar, another one is Bal Kalyan Purashkar. So this Shakti Purashkar is for children and Kalyan Purashkar is for the individual or any institution. So if you see this Shakti Purashkar, it shall be given for the children in terms of innovation, social service, scholastic, sports, art and culture as well as for their bravery. So the children carries a medal as well as a cash prize of 1 lakh rupees as well as a 10,000 rupees book voucher and a certificate and a citation. But so it is for this purpose. But if you see in terms of Kalyan Purashkar, it is for the individual or any institution who is actually contributing for the child development as well as the child welfare. So if any individual or institution is working in this two aspects, then obviously they are coming under this Bal Kalyan Purashkar. So this Bal Shakti Purashkar is also known as National Child Award. And this Bal Kalyan Purashkar Award is also known as National Child Welfare Award. So who is eligible for this Bal Shakti Purashkar means a child who is an Indian citizen and residing in India can apply for this award by registering simply on the web portal and filling the requisite information. And also in order to draw wide response from the public in order to motivate the children or encourage the children, any citizen of India can also nominate any child who has achieved excellence in any other field directly into this web portal. Okay. So the last article is Drug Regulators Wings Clipped. So what this article talks about is a committee which is housed in Niti Aayog. So this new committee is going to recommend the medicines for the price control as well as setting up of the drug prices which 
is done usually by the National Pharmaceuticals Pricing Authority. So who is this NPPA means? This is National Pharmaceuticals Pricing Authority which is an autonomous body and it is usually responsible for regulating the prices of medicines as well as the health products under the NLEM which is the national list of essential medicines. So if you see the procedure usually the Ministry of Health is preparing a list of drugs which is eligible for this price regulation and that is known as NLEM which is the national list of essential medicines. So this list is incorporated into the schedule 1 of DPCO by department of pharmaceuticals. So this department of pharmaceuticals is under the ministry of chemicals and fertilizers. So this is health ministry and this is ministry of chemicals and fertilizers and after the inclusion into the schedule 1 finally the NPPA which is the national pharmaceuticals pricing authority it is only responsible for fixing the prices of the drugs which are listed and not only this listed drugs but also the non-scheduled drugs are also monitored by the NPPA but the new recommendation is from now onwards the Niti Ayo committee will decide the drugs which should be under this price control and it is the one which is also recommending the pricing or about the pricing to NPPA. So if you see in this picture, so before the essential medicines automatically fall under price control but now it is delinked and health ministry prepares the NLEM but now Niti Aayog panel's recommending body is going to prepare the list and recommend NPPA on pricing and this new panel is also going to recommend pricing on non-scheduled list. So this is the proposal. Okay. So who is that Niti Aayog committee means? It is the standing committee on affordable medicines and health products. So this standing committee will be the new recommending body to the NPPA regarding the prices of the drugs as well as the health products. And one important thing here is the same standing committee is also empowered to take up the matter of pricing for examination Suomoto or on the recommendation of Department of Pharmaceuticals or NPPA. Thank you.